So the NFL started My Cause, My Cleats in 2016 as a way for players to showcase causes important to them on their cleats. Um, this year, we have more than 50 Broncos players who are sporting causes important to them. Um, they have the option to wear customized cleats for the game this weekend against the Texans. So you can see we have um, a variety of causes represented, different things that are important to our players. Liz, how have you seen this effort grow over the last couple of years? I mean, it seems like this is Please. Yeah, you can see more than 50 players participating this year. It's really become something that the players look forward to and they take it seriously to think about what's important to them and what they want to shed light on. Um, for some guys, it's personal causes to family members that have gone through things. Um, we have players representing things they're passionate about, whether it be youth health and wellness, um, fitness, inclusion, all sorts of things. Um, but even the rookies now know when they show up that this is something that they can be a part of. Um, the Broncos provide the opportunity for all of our players to participate, whether they're on the active roster, practice squad, injured reserve. Um, we really feel it's important to give a voice to our players and help them showcase causes important to them. Um, we have a local designer, Bree Berry, who did almost 50 pairs of these cleats. So she worked with our players to find out what they wanted and then really took the cleats and made them extra artistic and special. Can you explain that? Yeah, so after the game, the players have the option to keep their cleats or auction them for charity. Um, we have more than 25 players that are auctioning their cleats for charity um, on the Denver Broncos auction site. So 100% of the proceeds will go to those designated charities. Um, for the guys that decide to keep their cleats, many of them give them to people who inspire them to highlight these causes, um, whether it's a family member, um, someone they've met along the years. So it's a really personal thing for them. So a couple of our players have not gotten to see their cleats yet, so they have the unopened boxes. So for the first time, they'll get to see their cleats and take pictures and see it all. Uh, the Fargo Able Games, and it's run by TNT Fitness. Um, so TNT Fitness started in Fargo, North Dakota, uh, and it started off as just a uh, gymnastics gym, and then. They realized that they could reach a lot more people than just um, gymnasts with all the equipment in their gymnastics gym. So then they started working with um, physically disabled and mentally disabled um, clients, and then they moved that to where they were bringing in people from schools, and um, they were serving a ton of people, and then CrossFit came along, and they realized they can help um, this segment of the population um, be even more physically fit through CrossFit, and then they asked me to join, and then we came with the ABLE Games. Um, so the ABLE Games are gonna, is a CrossFit competition for every, the, whole, the whole spectrum of the population, whether you're um, an able-bodied person, um, you have a mental disability or a physical disability, everyone's gonna be able to compete. And that really hit home with me because obviously as a professional football player, I love to compete. Um, whether it's out on the field or just at home playing, playing cards, competition has been a big part of my life. And so um, for me to be able to help the whole segment of the population be able to go and compete and have fun and, and uh, really experience that part of life is, is a uh, you know, big, big thing that I want to help out with. And, and I'm really excited to uh, have the first one go this year. So it'll be up in uh, Fargo in April, and, and uh, the first one should be awesome. Sweet. Yeah, so I'm from Fargo. Um, they reached out to help um, raise awareness. And, you know, when I reached out, I was like, yeah, I'd love to help. And, I was, and then, you know, I kind of saw and they, they saw the potential um, that this had to really grow and expand. Um, so we kind of just been growing and it's been growing at a really fast rate. Um, the, the community of Fargo and the surrounding communities have really gotten behind it. And we're going to raise a ton of money this year and, and the competition is just going to keep growing. You those cleats? Those are pretty colorful. I did them, but these are pretty sweet. Uh, I saw them and I was uh, really impressed with them. I thought they were really cool. Um, you got a lot of stuff going on, and I, really, I like them a lot. I think they're really cool. You ever worn anything that colorful? Uh, no. I, well, I don't know. I don't think I've worn anything. You know, I did do a, we had a dodgeball competition in high school. Once I wore a tie-dye shirt for that. But uh, I don't know. I like them a lot, though. Probably the most colorful thing I've ever worn. I like them a lot. All right. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, guys. My cause of the cleats is uh, I wanted to uh, bring awareness to mental health, and so I chose the JED Foundation. And basically, they're just a foundation that just does a lot with mental health, and especially with like teenagers and kids growing up, you know, because with the whole new, with us progressing and social media and everything, the last few years and just growing up and becoming more and more of a thing, 
it, uh, you know, it impacts mental health and, you know, people feel like they have to have likes and all these other things, like have a social media presence to be liked and, you know, and that goes into the whole standing with bullying and everything like that. And so, you know, just being able to do something to, you know, bring awareness so that people can, you know, have the forefront, forethought of their mind of just, you know, making sure to and, and incorporate the mental health along with the physical health and all the things. So I think it really gets pushed to the side a lot. So I wanted to bring awareness to that. And, you know, I studied psych and social growing up, and so, you know, a big start of that was with, like, suicide rates and everything like that, and the fact of, like, the ages of, like, 15 to 24, the numbers, you know, they're starting to go down, but they're, they're, they're st steady climb from years past and everything like that, so, but, yeah, I just wanted to bring awareness to mental health and mental awareness. For so long, there was a, there was a stigma to that, especially in male-dominated sports, mm -hmm. violence, physical sports. Do you think that is starting to change, that where people can you know, be a little more open about it? Yeah, I think so now with all the different movements and everything going around and just being able to express themselves more. You know, I, be, I feel like it's becoming more socially acceptable, you know, because in, you know, 20 years ago and everything, you know, raising kids, it's like, you know, Boy, uh, men, young men growing up, they were, they were taught to, you know, bottle their emotions, to keep it to themselves, to not really express themselves, you know? But now in the new age, is able to, like, you know, be able to express yourself, you know? It's becoming more acceptable for people to go to therapy and talk about their emotions, you know, and embrace the fact that they have emotions, you know, that they can express and, and things like that. And I feel like, you know, as we progress, you know, as a society, that'll also grow with it too, you know? And so I feel like, it, you know, the way it was 20 years ago or even 10 years ago is way different and way better now, so. I like this. Oh yeah, wow. Thank you. Yeah, you did an awesome job. Thanks, man. With, with everybody. Cheers. Oh. I'm excited. You know, I I, I want to cry, but I, I'm not. Uh, this this is this is an awesome thing. Uh, this is an awesome cause. Um, all of these all of these cleats. This is definitely. Um, this is awesome. My cause is a uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, my dad. Uh, got diagnosed with it when I was in uh, high school. Um, I was a freshman uh, when we found out that he had it. And uh, it was hard, it was, it was tough. It's still kind of tough. He, uh, he can't see in his left eye and um, he can't feel anything in his uh, right arm. Um, and it was, it was an adjustment for my family. And so I wanted to do this on behalf of him. Um, I know he loves football. He never got to play the sport. And, um, he lives it through me, and um, it, you know he loves it, and, and it gives him gives him joy. He doesn't know that I did this for him though, so this will, this will be a huge surprise for him, and um, he will enjoy it. What so you, yeah. What do you think his reaction will be? You know he 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 might, he might start crying uh, to think that you know um, I uh, I would think of him and, and think of you know how much this has impacted me. And um, just me being there for him, you know, I, I think he would be excited, he'll be happy, and, and he'll love it for sure. When the Broncos asked you to do this cause, what was your first, your first reaction, why you wanted to do this? I was excited, and, you know, and my, my first reaction, I, I talked to Liz, and I asked her, I was like, um, I don't really have a foundation, you know, I don't, I don't have a foundation yet. You know, some people have uh, breast cancer awareness or, um, diabetes, different things like that. And she was like, you know, it's, it's whatever you feel like has the most um, pull on your heart. And so I thought about it and I thought, you know, I want to do multiple sclerosis. And that kind of, I don't know, gave me the idea to, to do it. I, I didn't know that I could do it. Um, and yeah. Have you visualized yourself walking out with those cleats on, on when you walk out on Sunday? And what that moment be like? I have. But I, these cliques are so awesome, and um, they're beautiful. I don't even want to mess them up like that. You know, I don't even want to want to get them dirty. Um, so I may just frame them. I'll just frame them because they're, they're they're awesome. Yeah. Um, so for my my cause, my cleats, I chose Special Olympics and Adam's Angels Ministry. Um, Special Olympics is just kind of a thing that's close to my heart. I worked with them uh, growing up in high school and in college. And uh, 
I just love the fact that they let uh, kids kind of just play sports and no matter what kind of disabilities they have, uh, they can all have fun and do something outside. Um, Adam's Angels Ministry is a ministry based out of Brenham, Texas. Um, they provide support for families with uh, kids with childhood cancer. Um, pretty much any kind of support you can think of, financial, emotional, uh, spiritual support. Um, just kind of try to help them get through the hard times. And uh, they're a really cool foundation that I worked with in high school. And um, so, yeah, that's why I chose them. All right. Thank you, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of people don't know, my wife has lupus, which uh, attacks every organ in your body. At some point, it's gonna take her life. Um, right now, her left kidney is functioning at 30%, her right one's at 70. Um, she has rheumatoid arthritis throughout her entire body. Uh, lupus is it's like a silent killer because it's, it's just one of those things where you're never gonna have a good day. It's, you're gonna be in pain all the time, and the reason I play football is to support my wife and to you know, try to make things easier for her and, you know, fight the good fight that I can fight because she can't do much of anything. So this year, my, uh, my cause for cleats is for the lupus, uh, lupus awareness and the lupus, lupus organization. What does it mean to have this platform to talk about that and maybe bring awareness? Uh, it means the world. I mean, there's just, there isn't enough awareness out there about it. Um, so my wife was diagnosed 10 years ago. She was given nine months to live. Um, here she is 10 years later you know, alive and kicking as much as she can. And, you know, it just, it means the world to have her in my life. You know, it's, she makes me a better person. You know, my worst day ever will never, you know, compete with what she goes through on a daily basis. You know, she has good days, bad days. Um, well, not good days. Every day's a bad day, but some days are less than others. Um, you know, and it just, it means the world to, to be able to be up here and, and stand for something and stand for her. I chose to do the uh, Leukemia Foundation. I know I said a little bit about it. Before, but my, uh, my great-grandpa Joe actually died from leukemia. Pretty special part of my life, um, lost because of this. And then currently, I have a second cousin, uh, her name is Maria Rose Brown, who's currently battling this, finding this the best she can. And you know, I just wanted to be able to do this for her, so that we're supporting her from, from afar. And you know, we're trying to do everything we can to help her. And you know, I've lost some, some friends, family members to it. It's just something that I really wanted to do for you know, some of the people in my life. And, past ones I've lost in my life. Do you know what you'll do with the cleats after the game? Say what? Do you know what you'll do with the cleats Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to give it to her, send her a pair. Hopefully we can keep that kind of under wraps so it can be kind of a surprise, but that's kind of what I'm trying to do with these. Sure, is it cool as a first-year player that the NFL does something like this that you might not have been able to do in college? Yeah, because you know, don't necessarily get to do too much like that, like you said, in college even. Um, you know, we weren't really allowed to wear pink either when that month came around to wear. You know, it's just super cool to be able to express something that, you know, we all kind of have something that we, you know, want to back and be able to do it is really, really cool. Ended up getting a chance to actually do uh, my cause, my cleats um, campaign commercial this year. So that's why I have two pair. But uh, my cause is um, Kareem Jackson Foundation. And, you know, we do a lot of work with women with breast cancer. That's what the pink is for. And kids with pediatric cancer, that's what the gold is for. Um, my mom is a two-time breast cancer survivor, and my sister is a leukemia survivor. So, I mean, that's pretty much self-explanatory, you know, what I, you know, come out and why I work so hard and, you know, why I support these two causes. So, um, for me, it's just all about being able to touch these families that went through the same thing that me and my family went through, you know, whether it's a kid, you know, going through, you know, uh, some sort of cancer or it was a, a, a women dealing with breast cancer. So um, that's pretty much, you know, my cause why my cleats are uh, these specific colors. Yeah, definitely. Um, because in a lot of situations, you know, some of these families may not have a lot of knowledge as to, you know, um, the things they need to do, especially with the women getting, you know, their yearly checks or how often they need to get checked, you know, stuff like that. You know, I mean, that's, it's huge for them if they can catch it at an early stage, you know, and, and go through, you know, uh, take the necessary steps, you know, to, to get back healthy. But um, it's, it's huge for me to be able to represent these families and also, you know, my, my sister and my mom and, you know, and they're fighting what they went through. 
Uh, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, and the purpose of my foundation is to love, to give back, and to inspire. Uh, and basically, uh, the idea behind it was, uh, is, is I just kind of wanted to empower people and to empower kids in my community uh, to kind of chase their dream, keep moving forward, and uh, just kind of uh, get out of the city and, uh, and find a new way and fi find new avenues. So I'm kind of the, the uh, face of the city in that way, and, and I kind of want to just um, use my platform to, um, I guess, uh, push kids to uh, go beyond what the city allows them to be or, or, or what they think. And uh, so on this, this red shoe right here is my little brother. Uh, his name is Philip Harris. Um, he died um, July of 2016. Uh, he uh, died in a, in a drowning. And I kind of wanted to uh, put him uh, on my shoe just as a representation uh, for my first time doing the Cause My Cleat um, and kind of just uh, represent him. Uh, in this game, and then uh, after the game is over with, uh, I plan on signing the cleat and then giving it to his mom. So, so my name is uh, sarcoma and sickle cell. Um, this past year, it's been rough on my family. Uh, we had three deaths within less than a year, honestly. A um, little cousin, Lexi, she died because of sickle cell. Uh, it wasn't the main cause, but one of her issues was trying to stay awake. She was behind the wheel, ended up falling asleep behind the wheel. Uh, ran into a truck, killed her instantly, and my dad passed away uh, in the beginning of this year because sarcoma is a, it's a cancer. Um, he was dealing with it for years. He will beat it. It'll come back. And then uh, he actually passed away the last game of the year, last year against the Chargers. Um, the tumor ended up moving to his heart, couldn't breathe. Um, and. I don't usually talk about stuff like this, so having my cause, my cleat, it allows me to express uh, what I've been going through in my life, and this is just one of the ways to let people know something that happened to me and to let them know that they could move forward or something like this, not really move forward, but um, there's, it's always better on the other side, I guess. I don't know, but um, yeah. This is my cause, my cleats. I used to do a lot with Children's Hospital here in Colorado. Um, so I didn't go with them this year, but I kind of went with stuff that kind of goes with that. Uh, so the first one was Gamers Outreach. Um, Casey Crowder did that last year, and I kind of stole it from them. Um, but they do a lot with Children's Hospitals, obviously big, obviously video games. What's up with? <laughs> uh, video games, they have go-karts, which is basically Gamers Outreach carts, um, kind of make mobile carts the uh, take video games to and from patients' rooms, um, trying to better their experience, which is what I'm big about for Children's Hospital. Um, so they're awesome. They do a lot of great stuff. I'm hoping to do some big stuff with them this off season um, with some other teammates. And then my second one uh, is Kick Cancer. Um, so uh, they basically help kids um, along with the treatments that they get in the hospital or separate from, depending on the kid's situation. They help with a lot of alternative treatments. Um, and then they also have an athletic program, basically where they sponsor kids and take care of kids. A lot of who can't afford to do the sports programs they want to do while paying for treatment or they don't have the equipment or X, Y, and Z. So they basically um, help pay for that stuff, help give um, alternative treatments, and help pay for the programs that kids um, need the, the funds to go and still do the things that they love to do. So that's the two I got this year. So this is uh, My Cause, My Cleat. Uh, this is Glory Soul Foundation. It's a foundation that I started uh, for my sister. Her name is Glory. She has sickle cell disease. Started this foundation three years ago to create awareness and um, also with, to help with research and assistance with people, assistance with people con currently living with sickle cell diseases here and abroad. So the main pillars of my foundation is um, education, awareness, you know, we've done blood drives, we've done events in Atlanta and D.C. to uh, create awareness for it, and also uh, programs abroad in Nigeria to uh, help people, uh, create awareness for people and understand uh, how sickle cell comes about. So that's basically what my foundation is about. My dear mine is um, Neptocure Syndrome. Um, it's a guy named Zeke that I've been knowing since uh, Mississippi State, and um, this disease it affects the kidneys real hard, and he's a he's a young man that's going through it. There's no care for it right now, and you know he take a lot of steroids, and you know be in and throughout the hospital, seeing a lot of doctor visits a lot. And um, I just wanted to donate these to him. I'm gonna give them to him um, after we play this Sunday. And uh, you know he's a friend to me, and I've been a friend to him. 
And you know, I just just love him like um, he's my brother. And uh, so Zeke, these for you, Zeke Earhart. So this year I went with um, Zach Johnson, the PJ golfer. His uh, his kind of foundation called Kids on Course. Um, it helps education and students in the Cedar Rapids, Iowa area. Um, when I was going through school at the university, obviously I was a science education major. Did some work with him back there, and you know this kind of hits home not only because I'm from Iowa. Um, I taught in the Iowa City, Cedar Rapids area. Um, and Zach's a huge Hawkeye fan and huge football fan, so um, I'm really excited to kind of help um, showcase his foundation and, and his work that he does with uh, you know school age kids in his hometown, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Have you reached out to him? Does he know you're part of this with, with him? Um, so it was actually funny. I, I did Brandon McManus's event earlier this year um, and was hooked up with Transamerica, and they're one of his big sponsors, um, and started talking and. and you know, they reached out to his people. I reached out to the, the person involved on Kids on Course, and I think he's busy kind of touring right now, playing golf. Um, I've talked to him a few times throughout the years, uh, um, him being a Hawkeye fan and a football fan, so I haven't spoke to him directly. Um, but from talking to his people, he's excited, um, and I don't really want to bother him. I'm sure he doesn't want to bother me. We're both kind of in season right now. So um, I hope to get to his event at some point. He has a big uh, charity golf event in Iowa, in Cedar Rapids, actually. Um, in the last couple of years, I haven't been able to make it. Uh, I've had two children of my own, and I kind of had to tell him that was a little more important, and I think he understood. Um, so the organization I chose was um, Everytown uh, USA, and uh, just gun violence, uh, what they stand for, and um, you know what they do to make communities safer and make this world safer. So um, I had an incident in uh, 2010. My dad was uh, murdered, um, just gun violence, a robbery going bad. So um, I wanted to just choose this organization just because you know where I'm from in the community I'm from. Um, it's a lot of those things going going um, going down uh, each and every day, and um, not just where I'm from. So um, it was something that just kind of hit home. Um, um, I just really started talking more about it, um, maybe about two years ago. So it was one of those things where uh, it was an easy choice, and um, just keeping this 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 world and this community safe, man. It's it's a lot of kids that lose parents um, to this type of these type of incidents, and I feel like guns are just so easily able to get attained and get control of. And, um, you know, that's when bad things happen. So just kind of spreading that that uh, that message, um, just keeping our communities and, and everything just safe around us. So. Shriners Children's Hospital up in Sacramento, California. Um, when I was in college, during training camp, we used to always go visit the kids, spend some time with them, and just visit them and be with them, um, and just encourage them and really brighten their day. And obviously, it was big for us too because we really got to just be with them. But I just wanted to bring some awareness to that, and obviously, I have personal experience with it, so I was really excited to be able to do this. But yeah, hey, well, yeah, what's going on, guys? Yeah, so uh, you know, my cause for my cleats this uh, this year is one that I've done the past couple of years, it's around the campfire. Um, basically, it's a non-for-profit back home which supports indigenous groups to Australia which are really struggling with funding and medical, educational and community-based initiatives. And, you know, my goal is just to help raise a bit of money with these and, you know, hopefully when I go home this off-season, um, you know, raise some awareness out there and put on an event out there. and you know, spark some interest in some kids, show them that, you know, sport's a way to escape some of the realities that they face and the communities that they're in. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can raise a bit of money with these and, you know, we can give back to the communities back home a bit. Do you take a sense of pride in how colorful your cleats are? Yours seem to always stand out. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of the colors here are, are pretty um, native colors to the uh, indigenous Australians. It's a lot of the colors and designs that they use in a lot of their artwork and, um, designs in just their culture so you know it's really uh, hits home for me seeing seeing these cleats and then being able to represent back home and represent a lot of those people is you know huge for you know a couple of us Aussies that are over here doing this so you know it's awesome and I'm excited to wear these stoked so. Have you visualized yourself putting those on walking out you know, the, the tunnel on Sunday and what, what that moment Yeah definitely um, you know it's always exciting to get you know not only some new cleats but uh, when they have some meaning behind them especially and you know it's going to be more exciting hopefully go make a couple plays in them and you know get some good money for them to send back home and you know help everyone out.
Are there other Australian guys in the league you said? Yeah, there's about, uh, I think there's five or six kickers and I think one one offensive lineman, uh, P squad guy. So, you know, there's a handful of us in there, but, you know, we're doing our best to raise some awareness for back home, um, some causes, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'm super excited, I'm pumped to put these on and, yeah, go make some plays, hopefully. Thanks, guys. Okay. So these are my cleats. I did the uh, Wounded Warrior Project. And this is really just a shout out and a thank you for, you know, those who served the country and sacrificed so much. And, you know, that they got to live with the, the things that happened to them while they're protecting this country. And, you know, and bottom line is I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for them being able to protect this country and serve us. And, you know, so this is a shout out to those who have uh, who've sacrificed. And, you know, they got to live with, you know, things that they've done overseas to protect us. Or, you know, so this is, you know, my, my shout out to them. So. Yeah. I I I just wanted to make sure they had the red, white, and blue, and that that uh, the Wounded Warrior you know logo was on there. So when I when I opened it up, it was it's awesome, you know, and you know so these uh when they get auctioned off, and you know some of those pro funds those uh, funds will go to that Wounded Warrior project. So you know it's and I think they posted the video this morning. It's just like a kid on Christmas and he opened up a new pair of shoes and so. What was your first reaction to the song? It's awesome, you know. I, 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 I'm speechless, really. You know, you know we have the artist over here, and she's, uh, you know, hats off to you. You know, it's. Uh, I wish I was as artistic as that, but I have no artistic ability in in me. So. Are you maybe gonna bid on? When I go to you know, I might. You know, if I don't want to be the one to actually win them, but uh, <laughs> you know, right I'll just donate it, and you know. I'll let everybody else have fun with the bidding war. I'll, I'll give my donation. <laughs> um, you know, uh, mine is, uh, you know, about breast cancer. Uh, my my great aunt Freddie died from uh, breast cancer. So I did I did breast cancer last year too. Uh, it's uh, something very near and dear to my family and me. Um, you know, she was one of uh, the matriarchs of our family and uh, definitely gone too soon. And just to see how quick it I like it brought her down and um, you know just saw how quick she deteriorated it just uh, you know it really broke all of our hearts and our family and so you know I, the one request I really had was uh, you know make sure it had my aunt Freddie's name on it you know uh, you know we miss her every day and you know, I, as you know cancer probably affects everyone in this room and um, you know I just want to I want to do something to kind of bring some more awareness to it. We think it's the cleat, but why is the cleat so emotional to a player, even if it has a, a, a design on it? Why is it so emotional to you? Uh, I feel like it brings you back to all those memories of that person, because honestly, most people's causes are somewhat personal to them. And you know, when I look at this, I, you know, I think of you know all all the good times, you know, even all the at the end when she was really going out. She passed my. Uh, junior year in college, and I think she got diagnosed. I think my freshman and sophomore year, so it, was, it, it wasn't. She didn't live that much longer, but uh, uh, you know, just you know, when it, it when it comes to cancer, you know, it just it comes in all types and forms, and you know, it just it, and that's one thing I feel like connects with everyone is um, is, is cancer, and especially like breast cancer with women, and even some men, you know. Uh, so it's just, you know, I, it really means a lot to me. And I just, uh, well, one, I love the cleats, too, because I just feel I love, you know, just this kind of little, like, gray or charcoal kind of color, coloring in. You know, and another request I said, I, I wanted a little pink in it, too, you know, just because it's, like, obviously it's a breast cancer color. And just for... All breast cancer survivors, you know, we're here with you, you know, like every, everyone feels you and, you know, we just, you know, we're going to keep fighting this thing until we can find a cure. Uh, you know, I didn't even think about that. Uh, you know, I might have, actually have to, you know, uh, because obviously I want to, like, I'm not going to keep them without auction off because I want the money to go to the foundation. So, you know, honestly, yeah, that's actually a good idea. You know, I might actually try to get these back. Dope.
What do you think of when you open the box? You know, it's crazy because um, I didn't really give the artists any much, you know, any much direction with where I wanted to go. You know, I kind of wanted to be a surprise. And, you know, this is pretty nice. The Bronco colors, the jersey logo, you know, it was real surprising to see. And I, I love it already. My cause, um, this team went through foundation. And we're trying to provide opportunities for the youth and, you know, just a, a mentorship opportunity for the youth. You know, I'm from Eagle, New Jersey, a, a small town, small town in Bergen County. Um, not too many professional athletes come out of there. And, you know, they're growing up with so much talent around. And, you know, a lot of people just don't have that guidance. And, you know, just that person there that, to mentor them and get them through these tough times and just to let them know that it's possible. And, you know, I luckily I've had a few guys and my dad was he played professional basketball overseas, you know, in his time. So, you know, I had some some people that, that had a, a lot of good advice to me, and, you know, they, they kind of kept me in the right direction. So, you know, I want to be able to give back and do the same to the youth and all over, and especially in my, my area. Who's were the most difficult? Who's were the most difficult? He just took, wait, did he take them? It was probably these ones because <laughs> I had to paint them all black. They were pretty ran through the mud. So I had to figure out a way. They were kind of a little crunched up. So those are probably the most difficult in that aspect, but I made it work. What's it like, what's it like for you to see all the reactions from the players as they're opening their boxes and to know that you had a hand in, in helping something that's really important to them? It's unreal. This is a dream project for me. I literally, I did one pair last year for um, Gino. And it's always, since I've gotten to customs, I've always dreamed of doing this. I watch other customizers do this. So to, to be selected to do 48 pairs is unreal and to just be here. How hard is it when you have someone who wants something very specific or somebody like Juwan who said he didn't hardly give you any direction? Is one harder than the other? They all have their own challenges. Um, I'm a person who likes a lot of artistic freedom. So like I like working like that. Just give me a basic theme, colors, idea, and I'll take it from there. Those, yeah, I mean, I'll make it work, but I'm more like the artistic freedom type of person. But either way, I'll make it work. Are you a football fan or, I mean, you're a Bronco fan? And does that inspire you or is that in your thought process when you start to design all these cleats? Honestly, I've never been into sports, but I'm really into it now, NBA, NFL, because of doing shoes. But I'm definitely a Broncos fan, of course. Got the shoes on, orange and blue. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? I'm from here. Denver, yep. So Who's the first athlete you worked with? Um, Demarius Thomas. He's my very first athlete. How many hours a day would you spend on these shoes? These ones, I try to limit each shoe to an hour, an hour and a half. <clears throat> and I try to get like five at least done a day. So, <laughs> so a good five, seven hours. Yes, I have a little studio area set up. When you see them on, on Sunday on TV, what will your reaction be when you see the complete? I'm probably going to cry because <laughs> it's so unreal to know that the majority of that field is my art. Well, then to see all of them unwrap the boxes in front of you, how was that? It's amazing. Like, I'm in like heaven right now. <laughs> what NBA players do you work on? Montrez Harrell of the LA Clippers, number five. I did. Like last season, I did 12 pairs for him. I just did another pair for him. So I did a lot for him. All right. Awesome. That's Thanks for your